Okay, here is a problem I created for class and I'm going to solve it. So let's just go over the problem. It says you have a base on the moon. Pretty cool, right? Who wouldn't want a base on the moon? Uh, you want to launch a satellite from your moon base such that it orbits the, alt the moon at an altitude, altitude of 50 kilometers above the surface of the moon. The mass of the satellite is 421 kilograms. Hint, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, I guess it does. How much energy do you need to get this into orbit? Don't worry about how you got into orbit. Just calculate the energy uh, needed to do that. Uh, so then I give the mass of the moon, the radius of the moon, no air, and then we'll talk about that last one. You can assume the initial velocity is zero. So let's draw a picture. So here is my moon. And then here is my uh, satellite. And then I want to go into orbit, and this is not to scale, uh, up here. Now let's put it V as not a vector. So here is the, I'll call this R, the radius of the moon. And then this will be lowercase r, where r equals r plus h. So that's, that's what I want to, I know h, right? h is the altitude. And so I'm going to go from position 1 to position 2. So let's say my system is the moon plus the satellite. I was going to write out plus. Plus satellite. And I can never spell satellite correctly, so I'll just put sat. In that case, I can say work is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. And going from 1 to 2, I want to find the work. Okay. Uh, in this case, the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. The potential energy will be negative g mass of the satellite, which I'll call, let's call this m2, and let's call m1, times mass of the moon over r, where, where that could be, you know, if, if you're right here, this is the r, it's big R to little r. I know that seems weird, but that's what it is. And this is negative because as we get closer, the gravitational potential energy decreases, but it gives a zero potential at an infinite distance away. So those two things are needed together. Now, let's just write this out. Zero, oh no, work equals k2 minus k1 plus u2 minus u1. So that's position one, that's position two. So I'm going to assume that I start from rest such that k1 is zero. However, u2 is not zero. It has potential here. here. u1 is not zero. Okay? It, we can't use y equals zero here because uh, we're not using the other gravitational potential. We're using the real gravitational potential, which is right here. So neither of those are going to be zero. Now, I can find, I know the height, I know the starting, so I can find these two pretty easily. But this one, I need to first find this v2. How fast is it going in orbit? So we have to kind of do a non-work energy problem there. So let's say that here's my spacecraft, and I have a gravitational force pulling it towards the center. That gravitational force, the magnitude of it will be g m1 m2 over r squared. And that's going to be equal to m v squared over r. So in this case, this is the force, and this is mass times acceleration, and this is the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So from this, I can solve for the velocity. And in fact, I don't even need the velocity. I'm going to solve for the velocity squared because I don't need the velocity, right? Because the kinetic energy depends on velocity squared. So and this is actually m2, and the mass 2s cancel. Multiply both sides by r, that cancels, and I get v2, this is v2 squared, is g m1 over r. That's the square of the velocity for being in orbit. And r is r plus h. Okay, we're pretty much ready to plug stuff in. So work is the, kin the final kinetic energy, 1 half m2 v2 squared g m1 over r. And that's, that's the second distance. And then plus u2, which is going to be minus g m1 m2 over r which is right because that's r plus h is r and then minus u1 so it's going to be plus minus a negative is plus g m2 m1 over big r which is the radius of the moon now you'll notice here that i have these two terms i can combine together because they both depend on r they both have the same thing so i have a half and then the full 
So this is going to be negative 1 half g m1 m2 over r. Now you don't have to do that, right? I could calculate that as a number and that as a number, but if I don't have to do it, I don't want to do it. Uh, plus g m2 m1 over r. Note that r is different than that, but I can factor this stuff out. So let's put this as uh, g m1 m2 times negative 1 over 2 uh, r, big R plus h, I'll write it out, uh, plus 1 over r. Okay, let's put in our values. So I have the gravitational constant g is uh, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. M1 is the mass of the, the moon, which was 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. You can really practice your, uh, your calculator skills here. Uh, M1 was 421. I'm gonna run out of room. And then I have minus one over two times R is 1.7 times 10 to the 6th. That's, I guess I have to write that out. 1.7 times 10 to the 6th plus 50 kilometers, which is uh, 550,000. So 5 times 10 to the 4th meters. And then plus 1 over 1. 0.7 times 10 to the sixth parentheses. Okay, let's see if I can put that in the calculator without making a mistake. And my, I really don't know that I can, uh, because I have I have issues for sure. Okay, 6.67 scientific notation. Arg, I really hate calculators. I do. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this two ways. 6.6. .6, I'm gonna put. I wanted you to be able to see it. Uh, times 10 to the negative 11th times 7.35 times 10 to the 22 times 421 times parentheses negative 1 divided by parentheses 2 times parentheses 1.7 scientific notation 6 plus 5, scientific notation, 4, close parentheses, close parentheses, plus 1 divided by 1.7, scientific notation, 6, close parentheses, equals. Okay, so that's going to be 6.24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times 10 to the eighth joules. Okay, now there was a comment on here. I'm not gonna solve it, but I'm gonna tell you why. It says you can assume the initial velocity of the satellite is zero meters per second, which is technically not true. So why is that not true? Well. If you're on the moon, depending on where you are on the moon, the moon is rotating. It takes, let's say, 28 days to rotate. So that means that this initial velocity is not zero. So it does have initial kinetic energy. It's not a huge amount, but it does have it. Um, okay, so now should I, let's do this in Python just to double check because I, I kind of doubt myself. Um, so I'm gonna switch over here to Python. Um, and I already have a program here, but I'm just going to delete that because I don't need that anymore. Uh, so let's just say g equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And let's make this bigger so you can see. Okay, I'm not going to put units. Uh, M1 was, I um, added the capital, 7.35, and I, yeah, times 10 to the 22. Uh, R is going to be equal to... One point, I just said 1.7, so I'll leave it as 1.7 times 10 to the sixth. Uh, H is 50 times 10 to the third. Uh, M is 
What was the mass? 421. Um, do I have any other numbers? No, I don't. Okay, so now let's just do it this way. Let's just not even combine together terms. I'm going to write this as K2 equals uh, 0.5 times G times M1. No, it does call that M. Times M1 divided by R. Let's just say this. R equals R plus H. So you can kind of see here that when I use Python, I can, I can just write stuff out. I don't have to calculate every little thing individually all, all at once, and it makes it super nice. Um, so that's, that's the final kinetic energy, right? Now I can do U2 is equal to negative G times M1 times M divided by R. Again, I don't know what that number is, don't care. U1 equals negative, I'm gonna write it as negative. I'll write it like this, I don't know if that likes that. Negative G times M1 times M divided by big R. Now work is gonna be K2 uh, plus parentheses U2 minus U1. Right, it's the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential. That's it. Print W equals W. Now, if I get a number different than what I calculated, I'm going to assume that it's made an error on the calculator. I got the same thing. Yes. Okay, so there you go. I mean, that's why I like to use Python rather than that dumb thing. It's not dumb. It's a good calculator, but I didn't mean to insult you. So there you go.